Hello everybody, welcome back to the cabin. Welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. I've got so much I wanna talk about today. There's just all kinds of crazy stuff going on. eBay sales are a little down. This is the second straight week. This is somewhat understandable though, for me at least. I don't know about the rest of you out there because I was really under the weather last week and did not list very many items. It is still a little bit disappointing, but there are two really awesome sales today. One in particular that just, when I saw it, I picked it up a couple weeks ago. I'm like, I've got to buy this. I have no idea what it's worth. I don't think anybody knows what it's worth, but I'm buying it anyways. And I'm going to make up a price on it and see if it sells. And it did sell. It didn't sell for what I wanted it for, but it did sell. I'm excited to tell you about that. And a bunch of other stuff as well today. We're giving away, we're announcing the winner for the one month free of my reseller genie. I don't know if we'll do two of those today or one on the next show. And I'm also excited to tell you there's no rotten food in my mailbox today, which is also good news so far. We'll see if it comes back at all. I suspect maybe it will, but we'll see. But thank you to everybody for watching those last few episodes and all your advice. It's awesome, but I can't wait to show you a couple of these awesome sales. Let's go take a look. Also, when I talk just a shade about the reaction from the last video in regards to 2000 and 2000, whoops, 2024 being possibly a little of a bumpy ride, and it never shocks me anymore to get some people who respond in a certain way that I think is just so detrimental to the success of people in their own mindset. But at the same time, it is somewhat understandable. This one just got listed, so it's on top. It's a little coach mini bag. And that one sold for $29.99 plus ship. All right, so here is the first sale. You might have heard me talk about this on the Trash to Cash podcast the other day. I didn't want to talk about it because this video hadn't come out yet, but here it is. This light bulb, I think I paid two bucks for this thing. I cannot remember, but it was a sale right down the road. I know I did not pay, pay much. I had never seen one before. It's like a really hard blow mold. And let's see if I can show it to you. It says Le Bulb, 60 watt, and I think it's just some kind of artwork of some sort, but it's a lampshade, I believe. Yeah, it looks like it's got the things for a lamp in there. And this has been listed a long time. It's been sitting back there a long time, and <laughs> I'm glad it sold. Now, this one was a tough one. I had it listed much higher, but somebody sent me an offer. Let me see if I can set it up. My camera works probably terrible here, huh? Somebody sent me an offer on this one for 150 bucks plus shipping. And I have flat rate shipping. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go see where it's going. And if it's going to California, maybe I won't accept it. And guess what? It was going to California. And so I looked at the shipping and it's going to cost me more to ship it than I charged because I do flat rate and it's a big item. However, I'm still going to take this one because it's not that much more, maybe eight or nine dollars more in shipping than I charged. Plus, I'm selling it for 150 dollars. And I'm going to make up that. And I only paid two bucks. So it's still going to be around a hundred dollar profit, if not more. It's actually going to be more than that for that bulb right there. I want to cut into the video really quick. I want to show you this item right here. So this is the light bulb. It is in a 19 by 14 by 17 box. I charge $39.99 flat rate for that item right there. And it is headed to California. Priority mail. $132.55. Ground Advantage, $93.22. FedEx Smart Post, $50.29. UPS Ground, $44.62. FedEx Home Delivery, $37.40. That's worst case scenario. Well, there you go. I was going to do the historic one next, but I think I'm going to grab one of these money dolls really quick, and then we're going to talk about that one. And I think there's one more doll that sold today. So I'm going to do what I normally do and put it on the ground and find this one and then come back. There it is right there. I thought I got the last money doll the other day, but I didn't. There's one more. So $15.95 for this money. Damn it, doll. All right, y'all know I love history. Even though I'm not an American history guy, I certainly love later American history, more pop culture American history. And pop culture didn't even exist well, I, you can make arguments that go back a while. I've talked about some of this before, but, you know, pop culture in a way where everybody in a nation, for instance, has access to the same things. And that was not the case until really we had radio. And one of the very biggest shows for kids and for adults, for that matter, was The Lone Ranger in the 19... 
1930s, I believe, probably early to mid 1930s. It was a radio program that later, of course, turned into a television show. Of course, I remember watching the TV show, which started in the 1940s when I was a kid. Obviously, I wasn't a kid, Dave Carey, in the 1940s, but I still watched that when I was a kid in the 80s. And of course, the big star was Clayton Moore. Clayton Moore was the first and the last of the Lone Rangers, but there was a year in there, there's supposedly a contract dispute, if I remember my dad telling the story right, and there was a different Lone Ranger for one year. And so that's kind of the history of this item right here and why I picked it up, even though I had the Clayton Moore autograph sitting right next to it. Let me show it to you. So I've been sitting over here for a little while. Let's see if I can get it out without knocking anything over. And this, uh-oh, Wallen's back. Sophie's a good girl, but Wallen's a pain in the butt. All right, so I might have to take it apart for you. I saw this sitting there. There was Clayton Moore autographed paint or painting picture over here. And this right here. And I can't remember what prices he put on them. And he's like, 100 bucks for both. I'm like, oh, man, because this is what I wanted. I didn't really want, I mean, I wanted the other one, but it wasn't like it was going to sell for big bucks. Clayton Moore rode around for years and years, all the way probably to close to 1980. I don't know when the gentleman died, but probably right up close to those dates. And he was at appearances all the time. He signed stuff all the time. So it's not like it was a rare signature. It's what he did essentially to make a living for a while. I remember there's a lawsuit I read about as well, where they told me he couldn't wear the mask or some nonsense. I can't remember. But that guy signed a bunch of stuff. But it was this one that I wanted. So I was like, you know, how much for this? I was expecting it to be more for this than it was for the other picture. But it wasn't. He said 30 bucks. I'm like, oh, man, sweet. So I grabbed this for 30 bucks. It has the other Lone Ranger, right? This is John Hart. And he wasn't Clayton Moore, but he was the Lone Ranger for a year. And this would have been much harder to come by. Let me just pull it all out. Let me put the camera down. So my heater just came on, but I'll, I'll try and show you a little bit and then I'll pick up the camera. Obviously, the signature is on this check right here. And that's the only place he has signed anything. But it's, it's all used to authenticate what's going on right here. So then it has a list of, you know, his television credits, which I thought was really interesting. Of course, the Adams Family, 1965. He's on Perry Mason. I remember that episode. I love that show. Greatest American Hero in 1981. Heroes have been always been cowboys on Rawhide a whole ton of times. Bat Masterson down here. There's just a bunch of cool stuff for sure. Let me see what else. I love I love Lucy. And this guy has a huge, huge list. Fury. Oh my gosh, I remember Fury. That was not a very good show, but I remember it. At any rate, I grew up in Southern California. All the old cowboys, Roy Rogers was there, Gene Autry. And so this stuff just intrigued the heck out of me. There's a picture of him. It's not signed. Jay Silverheels. Tonto, of course, played Tonto the whole time. And there's a kind of cool story behind it, if you know this story. And there are some folks that talk about, you know, where did the story come from and whatever. I don't think there's much to that. I would just say that the original story was kind of cool and it got me intrigued when I was littler. But, you know, there were six Rangers out there. Which, by the way, my, one of my other favorite movies is, if you want to call it a movie, is Lonesome Dove about those Texas Rangers down there. But there were six rangers, and they were all ambushed and supposedly all killed, but one survived. Tonto helped him out, of course. And then he spends the rest of his time as the Lone Ranger, trying to go back and, you know, all the whole uh, moral compass that he had. And, and he would, you know, he had silver bullets to remind him of the value of human life and shoot only to defend and not to kill and all that stuff. The whole lore of the Lone Ranger. So I loved all that stuff. So when I saw this, I'm like, I've got to grab this thing. And this is the marquee piece right here. It's the holster. And I read this here, by the way, is something that's... This holster belonged to my husband, John Hart. And that's Beryl Hart. I think that's her name. She was a famous actress. I did not know anything about her. But she signed that to say, hey, this is the real deal. And so she has some film credits herself, which might have helped the value of it a little bit. Who knows? But this was written by the person who had, like, control of the state as they're selling it off or something. And it says, hey, this might have been used in this or that with Clint Eastwood. It might have been used, I guess, probably in Rawhide, yeah. Might have been used in Rawhide with Clint Eastwood or the Lone Ranger. So, who the heck knows. But that was his. And this is his signature. This is his wife's signature. You get the picture with it. And you get the certificate of authenticity with it as well. I thought, you know what? 
it's got to be worth something to somebody, right? I mean, there's how often are you going to find something that was either used in Rawhide from the 1950s or used in the Lone Ranger? I think Rawhide was the 50s, yeah. So I picked it up for 30 bucks, and I had no idea what to price it at. I looked at some other John Hart stuff and some autographs and stuff, and it was, you know, it's not like he was, you know, Clayton Moore. <laughs> but... I just kind of guessed at a value because of everything that was here. And I put it at a $250 or best offer. And I got a little bit... Mom's mad at me. Come on. So you go out there. You keep him company so that... Go. You don't want to go? <laughs> all right. So he says, no way. So I just looked at it all and I'm like, you know, $250. Bucks as I knew I wouldn't get that. But I put it out there for that and I got an offer for $100. And there's a little bit of interest, not tons of views, not tons of interest, but enough to know it had certainly more than $30 value. I got another offer. And I, I turned down the $100 offer and I got another offer a little bit later with a note. All right, all right. I know you think everybody wants to see you, but they don't. And in the message, they said, hey, you know, we're gonna, I'm going to buy this and I'm going to send it directly to the Lone Ranger Museum, which I'm not aware that there is a Lone Ranger Museum, but apparently maybe somebody has one. I don't think it's, you know, there's a Texas Rangers Museum, but why would they put that? I don't mean the baseball team. I mean the real Texas Rangers. Why would they put that in there? But who knows? That's supposedly where this thing is going to the Lone Ranger Museum. They said they don't have much stuff from John. They got a bunch of stuff from Clayton Moore, so they're going to add this to it. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's what they said. And it sold for $150 plus shipping, which is a nice, tidy little profit. So, even there's not a ton of sales today, and we got a bunch more, but this one and this one being $150 a piece, you know, we're already making $200 profit on the day just from those two sales. It's pretty good. I ran in to get this one, and I want to talk about some folks' reaction to the last video and make a couple points that I think are important, but I want to show you this first. This is a long sleeve Nike dry fit t-shirt. That's all it is, but it is Nike, and it is dry fit, and it is new. And so I knew it would have some value, not an outrageous amount of value, but I was at the Webster flea market and, you know, all these people are running around like a chicken with their head cut off, buying a bunch of stuff. And I did too, but I wasn't like buying tons that day. I had a, a show to do and we were meeting a ton of people, but I saw this box sitting there and I'm like, man, there's got to be a hundred t-shirts in there, or maybe more. And I asked the guy to put a price on it. And I was hoping to get them. I'm trying to remember what I paid. I think I paid just over a dollar. Well, I'm not even sure. It might have been under that because there might be more shirts. We haven't even listed them all yet. But I'm going to say we paid right around a dollar a t-shirt. And there were a ton. It was a massive box. And they were all brand new. And I kept pulling out sizes. And they were large, extra large. I saw some mediums. What I was looking for is I didn't want a whole box full of extra smalls and smalls. That had been really hard to sell. And so when I found those bigger sizes, I'm like, I'm going to grab this box. And I believe we listed most of them for $19.95. Some of the smaller ones are maybe a little less. But I took an offer on this one for $16.96. I don't know how that worked out. Plus shipping for that shirt right there. And I'm into it for a buck. Which might not seem like a whole ton of money, but this is my kind of sale. Especially if you've been around me. If you've been watching me a while, you know I love this stuff. Because all the listings are going to be done like that, right? You just divide up all the shirts and then do it by size, put the quantity in. Like for instance, there are 21, there were 22 of this size right there. So even just looking at those 22, say I paid a hundred bucks, which I paid around that. I might've bundled something, but right around that. So, and maybe I paid less. I can't remember the video hadn't even come out yet, but I didn't pay much. So let's just say I paid a hundred bucks for that whole box of shirts. And there were roughly a hundred in there. At 16.95, which was a send offer, you know, you're making after fees and after everything, you know, the cost of goods. You're making like 12, 13, 14 bucks on that thing. And there's 22 of those. So do the math on that. 22 times 14. And that's with including the cost of goods in here. So if you exclude that and deduct it from 100. But you're still already in the profit just on one little batch of the shirts right there at 300. So if there's 100 shirts... And you're making 14 bucks a piece, you can do that math. I will take that for sure, a $1,400 profit on what will end up being like five different listings. That's it. Yeah, you got to ship them all, but I mean, how long does it take to ship that thing? The hourly rate on something that, like that is over $100 an hour, which is my kind of sale, even if it takes a long time, because 
I mean, how many shirts do you got to sell to make your money back? You know, nine out of all those. It won't take me that long to sell nine, and the rest will be pure profit for a long time. Sold another one of the Taz keychains right here. We're down to, I don't know if this is right, because there's tons of keychains, but this one, we're down to eight. And this is the kind of thing I'm talking about. Same with that. Even though you're only making four or five dollars profit every time you sell one, it's one listing that's on there forever. And it's super, super easy. So the time involved, again, is still really good money. This one went to a viewer, went to Ashley and Sam. So greetings from Alaska. Love your videos. Keep up the good work. My fiance, fiance's father passed away and loved Taz. His birthday's coming up and it felt like fate. So he's learning the eBay world. Well, I appreciate that very much and we appreciate you and I hope he enjoys it. I was actually planning to say some of what I'm gonna say really quickly here today. I'm giving it an abbreviated version as to the reactions from the last video because I was thinking about making a video that was a little bit different and putting it on when I'm away at a sale or something that, that I'm pretty passionate about. I've, I used to talk about this stuff all the time with different teachers that I'd work with and coaches and stuff, but you know, the mindset's a really powerful thing, and it just is... I don't I don't want this to come off the wrong way. I'm not trying to insult anybody's political opinions and, and say that political opinions aren't important, because they are important. However, when I talked about in the video, I can't remember what I named that video, something like 2024, maybe a bumpy road or something like that, and it wasn't a down video. The title sometimes appears like that, because that's what draws people in. But the video wasn't like doom and gloom, my eBay store is going to die. That wasn't it at all. But I find it interesting that folks, no matter what your political opinion is out there, a lot of folks are like, you know, until this happens or unless this happens, I'm not going to succeed on eBay or whatever. And I didn't say it quite that way, but in some ways they're looking for an excuse for their expected failure or for their past failure. And I'll just tell you this, you know, I've got political opinions like you do out there and people in the comments, you can tell we've all got different opinions. But the day I start saying, if this person gets in office or if this person stays in office, my future is going to be de derailed, is the day I've sacrificed my future to a politician, which is ridiculous. You know, there may be tough times coming or maybe they're not coming maybe they're here if you listen to some people maybe it's the greatest time ever if you listen to some people that's not the point that's not what that video is about it's not what this is about you know anybody sitting in the oval office or any politician who's the governor of this state or what that stuff if you let it change the way you do business then you've got an issue far more than anybody commenting on politics in the comments section. So this isn't a political statement. It's an anti-political statement. In other words, I used to tell the teachers that I'd work with, especially the young ones who early on started to complain about the system. And trust me, we all can complain about the system. But the moment they sacrifice their own effectiveness and their own plans for the future on this altar of complaining is the day I knew they were done. They weren't going to be a very good teacher. And I had a good mentor teacher, which, by the way, I disagreed with politically 100% of the time. <laughs> but they were an excellent teacher. And she told me one thing. She said the number one, two, three, four, and five factors for how effective you are as a teacher is you. And I thought, hmm, interesting. And she was an excellent teacher for a very, very long time. In other words, we can look for excuses other places. We can, you know, completely derail our own ideas, our own goals, our own ability to adjust. You know, a kid succeeding in your classroom, she told me, the number one factor was you. And that was it. That's all you need to succeed is build a relationship between you and your students and you will succeed regardless of what's going on around you. And we can point fingers and we can do all this stuff. And, and look, I'm not saying politics aren't important. I'm not saying worldviews aren't important. I think that stuff's extremely important. But don't ever give up your own goals and your own ambitions because you can't do something because of X, Y, or Z. Because the reality is that may be true in some places in this world, but not so much for us. I mean, let's face it, we live in, you know, one of the most prosperous places 
and eras in the entire history of the world. And if we can't do it, my goodness, how did anybody ever do it before us? And that's with the economy being good or bad in relative terms. We live in a land of opportunity and it is definitely a place to embrace it instead of, you know, use things as excuses. All right, I'm off my high horse. Liberty University polo shirt right here. That one's a cross-listing sale. That one's sold on Mercari. And it didn't sell for a ton. I think they sell for right around 15 bucks over there on Mercari. But that's cool. And every once in a while, in a blue moon, somebody asked me the question, how do you ship shirts? And I'm like, well, you must not be on eBay because most folks know that. But here you go. That's how I ship shirts right there. Just fold them up, put them in there. I don't put them in a secondary bag. I know a lot of folks do, but I don't. I would maybe if it was a super expensive shirt, but not for something like that. And... Big shout out to List Perfectly because it's a cross listing sale. And of course, that link is down below. Code Commonwealth, you want to give it a shot. And there is a thank you as well to Ryan for buying plans for the Commonwealth Picker shipping table over on CommonwealthPicker.com. Sold another damn it doll. <laughs> These things have kept me afloat. So I can find this one. It's a tie. There it is right there. I see it. $12.95 plus shipping. This one went to a viewer as well. Surprise, surprise. They tend to do that. $12.95 plus shipping. It looks like I went to Salinas. It says, love the videos. You have a great family. Also a reseller here. My eBay and Posh store is the Picking Munchkin. I like that. That's really good. So there you go. I'll read the rest of it in a second. But there's so much opportunity. So much more opportunity now than there's ever been for people to find what they do well. The platforms they do well on. The, the platforms that match the items they sell. There's all, you know, we talk about them all the time, right? And this is not saying you have to do these. What it is saying is there's plenty of opportunity out there to pivot, to change, to adapt, to add on things, to subtract things, to do things in a way that's enjoyable to you. Whether that's, you know, we've been talking about districts, you know, the golfers right there, Mulligan's Golf Shop, we've been talking about. Um, what else? We dibbed it.com, of course, which, by the way, we're doing a massive sale i think there's going to be great deals all day it's today today's thursday so it's not today for me but it's today for you so if you're watching this after two o'clock p.m eastern there should be shows running all day i'm selling what am i selling i'm selling video game consoles tons of them and some other stuff and i'm a little afraid they're not going to go for much but we'll find out but you know look at what we're selling right and so we're selling on multiple platforms. We're selling on Mercari. And of course, we talk about Bonanza. But there's Etsy. And there's, you know, like I just said, Whatnot. And Divi there's so many different platforms that those folks that want to find an excuse for failing are going to find it. Don't, you know, embrace failure. I used to tell my baseball team all the time. I'm like, hey, you're going to make mistakes. I don't care if you make mistakes. What I care about is are you failing going forward or are you failing going backwards? And that was the big thing for me. And I meant that literally, because a lot of times errors, if you're an infielder or an outfielder in baseball, come because you're tentative. And so that's kind of been my motto, you know, give it a shot. Not just a shot, but give it a good shot. And some things I've done since I've done this social media have failed, but some things have succeeded and those failures kind of fall off to the wayside and the successes are what keep you going. I'll shut up. I told you I would before and I didn't. Getting this for my son's birthday since he's on the spectrum. So very cool. Let me tell you, I used to teach some autistic folks, you know, many, many times in, in my classes and at all different levels. And some of them were in my AP classes and were absolutely brilliant and wonderful kids. So um, I really do appreciate that. And I hope he enjoys it. You know, I love selling cassettes and we've been selling a few lately. We sold Dookie. If I can find it. There it is right there. Green Day Dookie. That was a classic cover. And that one sold, not sealed, y'all. Not sealed, there are good cassettes. You just gotta know what you're looking for. $24.95 plus shipping. All right, I screwed that up. $22.95 plus shipping. This hat came from that lost footage that unfortunately happened not too long ago. That lady was amazing. I wish I could have shared her story with you, but it's an old three striper, not your traditional one. North Carolina in orange and made in Taiwan. Pretty cool hat. I don't think any other ones were out there. This one, it says repeat buyer, so you may be a viewer, David. Thank you if you are. I appreciate it. $24.95 plus shipping. I haven't come in here too often, but I figured I would today for a couple of reasons. 
we've been doing a ton of work in here and we by meaning it's not just me we got my whole family jess has been coming over and helping us as well because we have this ambitious goal we're getting through everything and part of it had to do with all of those consoles i literally i don't even know i thought i had 50 i bet i have 70 consoles and so we're selling those today over there on dibbed it but i wanted to show you this as well by the way you can click through that link and come and join us we got a ton of sellers selling over there live today so it should be a good time and i also wanted to give away this my reseller genie free month but i want to show you this too because when I talk about opportunity, it's not just me blowing smoke. I'm saying there are tons of opportunities out there. This is glass, which I never pick up. Some pretty cool pieces, actually. I think that one's a Murano back there. I mean, these have value. These do as well. All of it does. I don't know much about glass, but I'm getting better. And when I saw that Jocelyn started knickknacks over there on District, and now I see tons of people going live and feeding off of that audience, I called over there and I'm like, hey, you know what can i do here what do i need to do i applied and then i got to be a live seller and we are going to do a massive show it's not for a while but i just kind of wanted to bring this up today and we're going to sell glass because i came up upon an incredible opportunity for glass which is something i don't do and i'm like this is a perfect opportunity to learn and my buddy tim over the years is going to come down in may and we're going to do a show over there and i've been learning a little bit we've been listing some on ebay as well and those should be getting up here pretty soon i have a whole shed full of glass out there and i thought you know years ago it would be very difficult to do this type of selling but now i have access to somebody's glass audience and they're basically giving it to me as they are tons of sellers and i know live selling is not for everybody that's not what i'm trying to say here what I am trying to say is there are many opportunities that did not exist in the past. And I think that this is an encouragement. It's not a detriment to people. And it also allows people to do things the way they've always wanted to do them. If they want to do them the same way as they've always done them. If they're continuing to succeed, by all means, do it. But there are so many opportunities that we just you know especially in this country don't really have too much room to complain i used to tell my students all the time that they are you know because a lot of them thought didn't think of themselves as wealthy right because you compare yourself to the people around them i said you guys don't realize that you are in the wealthiest one percent of human beings to have ever lived in the history of the world even if you aren't wealthy in our terms today so you know, that's kind of where I'm at and I have tremendous gratitude. I don't know why I'm going on. I'm going off today a little bit. All right. Let me give this away. SH3570. You are the winner for one free month of My Reseller Genie. She says, I would like to try My Reseller Genie. I've been doing tracking myself. My sister is a CPA, so she looks over it, but it is still a lot of work with all the spreadsheets. So absolutely send me an email, come up picker gmail.com and we'll get... You hooked up with Faith and Paul over there for your free month. Anybody else wants to give it a shot? There's always a link below or at commonwealthpicker.com. You can find those links over there. Code Commonwealth gets you 15% off. All right, Turner's got a little Commonwealth comedy. What do you got? How do you get a country girl to, to like you? How do you get a country girl to like you? I don't know how. A tractor. A tractor. <laughs> That's very good. Turner, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up. Look at this. You know, some people are buying these right here mm -hmm. to send to their significant other can you imagine giving somebody a plush enema for valentine's day you think that's dangerous if you had a girlfriend would you give her one yeah <laughs> she would think you're a nut thank you turner Bye. i had to get another one of these school caps because i screwed up the other day it was a quantity of two and i only sent one so matthew i apologize he was watching the video he's like i hope you sent two <laughs> like uh, i knew i had to and i still didn't ten dollars well he spent 21.90 but i only sent him one so matthew i'm gonna send that one out to you and oh i know what i want to do i want to thank a couple people mojo dojo matter of fact he's selling over there on dibbed it today as well this shirt was from him check this out he does these like uh, custom made puts all the, the decals or screen printing on them or whatever it is look at that it's a disney shirt but it's got look at all the stuff beetlejuice on there hocus pocus and chucky and bright and chucky he's got his own little card on there and he sent this over to us he's the guy i sent the guitar to and we're waiting back on the box to see what we get for for that trade 
trick or treat. Really, really cool. So Mojo Dojo, we appreciate it. He says, open this with a trash cash feller. So that's what I'll do. And then we got this as well. Let me open it. We got these from Heather and Dennis. The darndest things. The damnedest things. There you go. That is very, very kind of you. Sent these to the dogs and the cats, maybe? Anyway, check that out. Look at that. Mojo Dojo. But look at that. It says Mojo's. And they will be super happy. Juan's right behind me. And Turner has them. So he's waiting. Look at him. Chomping at the bit right there. You guys are very, very kind to send that for the pups. Appreciate it. Alright, y'all. Ring's got her hands full with orders from CommonwealthPicker.com and a couple of strays. What is he doing? <laughs> Alright, what you got, baby? Gigi's Collectibles got a giant Animal Man. Nicole got a blue CWP shirt and a new Animal nope, Man. Nope, she got a blue Animal Man. Oh. Yep. So... This is the deal, y'all. We've got three of them. Obviously, these are just about out. These are just about out. So when I said that on a show the other day, <laughs> these start selling like crazy, which is nuts. This is the third edition. I found this kind of funny. This is trash cash kind of comedy here. This is number two now. An enemy man that's mm. number two. <laughs> and these are almost gone. We won't reorder those. So we combined the two into that third edition one since we're just about out of it so anyway keep going here go on sherry got a new animal man richard got two new animal man and bradley got something <laughs> well i can't remember what it is either yeah. thank you bradley and uh, big thank you to richard Otnip drop flips by the way our garage sale nation facebook page reagan he runs it y'all go check out his youtube channel Otnip drop flips it's ford ford pino backwards flips uh, yeah. But he runs our, he helps run our Guard Sound Nation Facebook group, and it just hit 30K, which is really awesome. Nice. So, Richard, we appreciate it. Plus, he's doing a giveaway or doing a fundraiser. Y'all go check out his channel, and he'll let you know. And, Richard, if you need me to do anything, let me know. And you leave that no, cat alone. making biscuits. <laughs> Bye, and don't forget to get your sticker at CommonwealthPicker.com. Hey, y'all, thanks again for joining us today. Don't forget to come and join us over on Divdit today. If you're watching this on Thursday, anyways, be selling all day with a whole ton of sellers. District app, Divdit.com. If you don't have an Apple app, you can always go and check it out on your browser, on your computer. So we appreciate it very much, and I can't wait to see you next time.